Uh, my name is Guillaume Jacquino and I'm working at English in Europe as Policy and Advocacy Officer. Um, disability hate crimes happens when victims are targeted because of their disability or their perceived disability and because they are more vulnerable, they are um, easy targets for the perpetrators of such crimes. It is often motivated by negative stereotypes around people with disabilities, such as they are dependent, uneducable, unemployable, and productive. Um, it's not possible to have data at the EU level, as all countries do not collect data specifically on um, online disability hate crimes. Services of police do not systematically identify crimes as targeting someone because of his or her disability. And even though disability-specific data is collected in some country, most of the victims are reluctant to report their experience or do not know about their rights or what discrimination is. All of this leads to a critical rate of underreporting across the EU member states. Disability is not included in EU hate crime legislation. The EU Fundamental Rights Agency rightly pointed out in its research on hate crime that while hate crimes linked to race, ethnicity or religion have been on the EU's agenda for a long time, disability is less often taken into account. As of October 2014, only 12 EU member states had disability in their legislation on hate crime. To our knowledge, Families and DPOs remain the main source of support for victims with intellectual disabilities. There are some services across Europe looking particularly at victims with disabilities, women with disabilities, in the UK, Austria, Germany. But the main problem remains that general victim support services are not inclusive of victims with disabilities, and especially those with psychosocial and intellectual disabilities. A couple of years ago, we led a project called Safe Surfing to create online trainings for people with intellectual disabilities regarding the use of social media, personal information that you should or shouldn't share. We made videos available on YouTube in English, French, Spanish, Italian and Polish. We also realized that all the training we provided was very useful for trainers and families as well. Now we are in a project called Be Safe that aims to raise awareness of people with disabilities on dangers online. They also give teachers, educators the tool to support users um, of the internet with intellectual disabilities. Finally, in this project, we cooperate with police in tackling online crimes faced by users with intellectual disabilities. We also cooperate with networks such as Equinet, representing equality bodies, to tackle the underreporting of cases touching people with intellectual disabilities to make sure that all victims are reporting and that equality bodies are becoming more accessible to victims with intellectual disabilities. Our members are also very active in making sure that all violence against people with intellectual disabilities is rightly addressed. For instance, in Hungary, a self-advocate organization is cooperating with um, police officers and train them to better welcome victims with intellectual disabilities, how to interact with them, communicate with them, and make sure that they have the support they deserve. So again, one of the main barriers is the lack of accessible information. They do not know that a service is existing first. They do not know about their rights, about what is discrimination. Very often they think that they have not been treated unfairly, unequally. Very often as well, um, the problem is that when they go to a place, they won't be considered with the same respect. 
attitudes such, such as not talking directly to the victim, but to a parent, to the super person, is very common as well. When it comes to following the procedures, they are not involved most of the time. So all this behavior contributes to the lack of reporting of cases um, targeting victims with intellectual disabilities. We did not have specific example of cooperation in this matter. However, following a petition in the UK to fight against disability aid crime um, that was released last January, MPs who backed the petition recommended that the government and social media companies directly consult with people with disabilities on digital strategy and hate crime law. More generally, People with disabilities are not systematically included in decision policy making that can directly or indirectly affect them and this needs to change. First, it is important that member states collect and publish data on hate crime disaggregated by disability. Without figures, this situation and experience lived by victims with intellectual disabilities do not have any official recognition. Second, there is a need for actions to prevent these online hate crimes against people with disabilities. So, for instance, training could be provided to people with intellectual disabilities on how to better recognize dangerous situation online. Then repression. It is very important, as I said before, to have a legislation in place to tackle hate crime online. Equality bodies, services of police must become more accessible for victims with intellectual disabilities. Victims must also be encouraged, enabled to report their experience. Finally, support must be provided people with intellectual disabilities who may have been deeply impacted by the experience need space, need people to talk about it. There is a need to build capacity of mainstream victim support services so they can better receive and accompany victims with intellectual disabilities. When you are interacting with people with intellectual disabilities, it is very important to take your time, to make time to enable interaction. You're going to make sure that what you say is understood by the person in front of you. Use simple words and really pay attention to what the person is telling you. Make this person feel comfortable with you in a space it can be also possible not to receive this person in your service, but in a neutral place or in a coffee or a place that the person knows quite well. When it comes to the service of police, it is very important to respect the choice of the victim. If the victim wants to come alone, she or he has this right. If they want to come with someone, with a support person, it is important too. But in that second case, it is very important that police officer address directly the person and does not only interact with the support person as it is often the case. I would say that while interacting with police officers, what is very important to bear in mind is that people may be even more under pressure because of the uniform, because of the service, because of the environment. So it's very important to bear in mind and to make even more time to ask questions, to make the person feel comfortable. What we also see is that when victims with intellectual disabilities report crimes, offenses, they are not taken seriously by the police. That's, you know, 
they do not really believe what happened to them, the experience. It can be even more than insulting, a traumatizing experience for a victim who will no longer report any other experience that will happen to her. So these elements are very important to bear in mind.